don't know. So, I was going to go to sleep. Well, <laughs> I was going to go to sleep, but I'm not tired enough just yet. So, I made a cup of tea, and while it's cooling down, let's talk about some math. None of this is high dopamine content. It's just us hanging out. We talking about math. So grab your cup of tea. I don't know, do something in the background or just hang out with me. Um, I'll tell you about an exploration that I did in math. As you know, I'm trying to get myself to learn math again um, in a more fun, creative way, following my curiosity now that I'm out of school. And so what I did about two weeks ago was starting with calculus. The calculus itself isn't exactly the point, but I needed to start somewhere, right? The way I really want to fuel my exploration in math is with my own ability to create questions and to explore those. But I need the material to create questions out of. And so we gotta start somewhere and figure this out along the way. So. I started doing the calculus course in Khan Academy, and their first unit is about limits and continuity. And there's a lot of, you know, clear explanation about how to do limits and continuity. But first, I want to point out that there's some, like, important quotes in some of these videos that Sal shares that is important beyond, like, calculus itself. One of them is, Sal was explaining this function, and he says, like, this is a bit of a bizarre function, but we can define it this way. You can define a function however you like to define it. And this is all of math, right? The whole point is that we can define anything however we want to define it. If it aids us in our exploration or in a proof or something, right? So... We have all this freedom in it, and we get to pick what numbers we try or don't try, you know. That's the really, really cool thing, is like all this freedom. And I just want to keep that in mind going forward, that when I'm creating questions or equations or, you know, exploring something, I get to define it. And that's cool. Like, it, I don't only have to do what someone else says, or... If I'm watching a video and trying to learn something, I don't only have to do that example. Those type of things. But there was this other point, which is, Sal was talking about how do we know there are infinite integers, right? Infinite different integers. And he goes on to say, like, it's not like we've counted all of them and got to infinity, right? Um, and he says, we know there are infinite integers because for any integer there's another integer that's even larger than that. That there's always another one and another one. And the thing I learned from this is the definition of infinity. Like, that's the definition, isn't it? There's always another one. Like, I never realized that before. Um, I thought about infinity. I love how calculus deals with infinity and uses infinity to help us do calculations, um, you know, on curves and functions that it might be hard to calculate, you know, something with if we didn't have infinity. Like, but anyway, but I never understood until like this particular moment that the definition of infinity is literally, there's always another one. So keep this in mind for a second, because I'm going to use it in the next question that I pose. Um, in limits, right, we don't want to get infinitely big, but we want to get infinitely close to something. Um, and if you've never heard of a limit, that's essentially the definition of getting infinitely close that we have this graph, we have a point, and we don't want the value at that point 
we want the value, you know, that if we go from either the left or the right side of the graph, what point we would, we, we keep getting closer to as we get infinitely close. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, if you've never done calculus before, so my bad, if not. Again, um, that was kind of a tangent. So, with this question, like in limits, we don't want to get infinitely big but infinitely close, I started thinking about, okay, well, we can put any second word after the word infinitely, right? Like infinitely big, infinitely small, infinitely close. And so then I was thinking about it. What other words can I actually fill in into that sentence and how many of them are valid or not? thing is I didn't get really far into like thinking of many examples because when I started thinking about like okay well infinitely far infinitely long then I was like wait infinitely short like can anything ever be infinitely short so my first hypothesis was I think things can be infinitely long, but not infinitely short. And here is my so-called proof for it. So we take the definition of infinity as to mean that there's always another one. So if we continuously add the same quantity, let's say to a line, we can get something infinitely long because we can always add again. If we continuously subtract the same quantity, eventually, we get to zero and there's no more line to subtract from. So it's not infinite because once you reach zero, you can't subtract anymore. That was my first idea. But then I'm like, okay, well, we have negative numbers, right? What if we allow for negative numbers? Then I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of funny because, so imagine a line, right? If we allow for negative numbers, we have this line and we subtract it until we get to zero once, or I guess I should make the visualization this way. We subtract until we get to zero. Then if we keep subtracting, we allow for negative numbers, then the line starts getting bigger this way. And then I'm like, but wait, the line keeps getting bigger, so then that's not infinitely short, that's infinitely long. And then I thought of this question of, is infinitely short the same thing as infinitely long, right? Once you pass zero, the more you subtract, it's the same thing as like adding more negative. So. It's just, it's really interesting to me because it got me thinking about like one of the theories about how, um, you know, stars explode or how in a black hole, like the end of something is the beginning of something else that like, I don't know, if you have all this stuff come into a black hole, right? And like maybe per se reach some sort of zero-ness and then on the other side, is like, woo, new universe. Um, I know this like went really far, really fast. Um, and it might be completely wrong, but I found a question, right? I thought of a question that was my question. And the more I engage in that and explore that and ask more questions, the better I'll get at the questions. So let's keep going, um, but take a step back. So maybe infinitely long is the same thing as infinitely short, right? But then, you know, sometimes we are like stuck in like adding the same quantity and subtracting the same quantity. So I was like, okay, what if the quantity that you add doesn't have to be the same quantity, right? I don't know if that's a valid question or not when considering something infinitely short, but if you subtract a quantity smaller than the one before, smaller than the one you subtracted before, then like, 
given that your first subtraction let you remain above zero, then you will never reach zero, right? So let's say we got 10. Say the first time I subtract five. Second time I subtract three. <laughs> anyway, three. Um, third time I subtract one, right? Like, so like we're gonna get, sh e if each time I subtract something shorter, I'm gonna get to like some decimals and smaller decimals, but I'm never gonna get to zero. And so in that sense, I feel like that would count to something infinitely small, but I don't know if it would really count as infinitely short. Though maybe, maybe that whole thing is just getting into semantics really rather than math, but it's still a pattern, right? Patterns of numbers and patterns of words. Um, and maybe I can make some meaning out of it. So I was thinking like short and long are distances, right? Um, and we often talk about them using some linear or line type of measurement and small and big are more abstract and they include more dimensions, right? And if that's the only difference, then maybe something infinitely small in a few dimensions is the same thing as something infinitely short in like one dimension. Um, yeah, and so I still feel really curious about like the, like about that moment of passing zero when you subtract from like a positive number, you get to zero and then you keep subtracting until you get more negative. It's really, really cool how numbers can do that, that like even though it's negative and you're subtracting, it's the same thing as adding, like that's, that is actually kind of cool. Like I know we learned that more or less in elementary school, but the fact that you can think about the same concepts in multiple ways is also a beauty of math because that's what allows different ways to explore the same problem. And maybe one way will help you get an answer when another won't, right? It really can. So we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, that was just this part. I do have something else to explain I, I, that I explored a week ago instead of two weeks ago. And it started off with this. It was inspired by a video that I saw made by Vihart, Vihart, I'm not really sure how to say her YouTube um, channel name, but maybe I'll figure it out by next time. And the only thing is like for this next one, I really need to have my phone somehow like above me so that you guys can see the paper because I was playing with patterns on this one like really playing with patterns. I started off with like coloring, um, you know, different numbers, writing them in a spiral or in a line, just seeing what patterns sh came up. And one thing I learned, which is going to apply to all of this, is that you just have to start somewhere. You're not just gonna come up with a question out of nowhere without having any material to work with, which I'm gonna go with, obviously that's not gonna be true all the time, you might out of nowhere come up with a question on your walk having not done math for like a year or two but it's more like it's kind of unlikely right and i realize that sometimes you have to you have to spend that time in the space of i have no idea what i'm doing or why and then slowly like you'll maneuver your way into like wait i noticed something or what if I ask this question? Or, wait, here's an even better question than the last one I asked. And maybe it'll lead you into learning something new. So I think I need to build some sort of like holder for my phone. There's like a forest next to me. So I might 
just try and get some sticks and build that. <laughs> I'm not joking. I know I can order it on Amazon, and if I can't figure out how to build it, I will just go and order a phone holder on Amazon, but why not try to build it? Anyway, I'm excited to show you that one because I actually like made up my own formula and that's really cool like I led myself all the way to like having to learn summations again which I really didn't like in calculus 2 in college because we got to like series or something and it didn't really make sense but funny enough it does still revolve around the theme of infinity which I got myself curious about from this calculus um, introduction and yeah we'll see how this goes the hope is that my questions will lead me to having to learn some of the math that I've forgotten to like relearn it like summation notation like I had completely forgotten that and when I got further into my second exploration I was like and now I need to google this so yeah Anyway, let me know what you think of the infinity questions and that whole, I don't know, thought of if a black hole collapses from one world, maybe it creates another one. Maybe math can also be used metaphorically. Um, and maybe patterns in math can mimic patterns in the universe, right? Someone in one of the comments was saying like, oh, there's this question about was math created or discovered, you know, the philosophy of math. And, well, I'm not going to discuss that, like, right now because I don't think I, I have explored enough to create my own answer. Um, I feel like, what was I saying? Um, if math was created or, dis or discovered. I feel like whatever the answer is, it really is true that like math is vast, it's super creative, and we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure out how to make it fun. We're going to figure out how to do this, and so we're going to drink a much, bunch of tea in the process. Or, you know, you drink whatever your favorite drink is, mine is tea. So I will be having that and hanging out. And no pressure, no deadlines. Just curiosity and exploration. I'm trying to come up with fun questions, and so we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.